All right, gang, here we go. This is for Chem 2, Unit 7, talking about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures and Mole Fractions. All right, so this uh, this stuff here isn't really too bad. I mean, most of the gas stuff uh, really isn't that hard compared to other things that we've been working on. But um, it is pretty important, and it has lots of applications to lots of different fields outside of chemistry, uh, physics, and engineering, and all sorts of things. So it's important to have like a basic grasp of this, but it's really not that difficult. Um, yeah, especially at the level we're talking about. If you take this stuff down a level deeper, like the math of it starts to get pretty complicated with a little bit of calculus and so on and so forth, uh, statistics. But really, like the base surface, what does this mean to a chemist or a physicist uh, or an engineer? Um, not too terribly hard of a concept. All right, so first thing we need to understand about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures is that when two gases that don't react with one another are combined in a container, they act as if they are alone in the container. All right, and part of that, and that makes sense, right? If two things, uh, if they're gases, that means they're really far apart from one another, right? Gases have a really low density. That's why it's so easy to walk through them because uh, there's not a lot of molecules getting in the way as opposed to like a solid or liquids even, all right? And so they're really far apart from one another. And then not only that, but it, the times that they do run into each other, uh, if they don't react with one another, they simply just bounce off each other and just keep going, right? So it's it's pretty easy to imagine the fact that once you have a gas, two, two, two or more different molecules as a gas inside some container they're just kind of bouncing off each other like ping pong balls and not really doing anything okay um, so because of this the total pressure of any mixture of gases equals the sum of the pressures that each gas would exert if it were present alone okay and so essentially we get this here that the total pressure is equal to the partial pressures of each of the gases and these are these are referred to as partial pressures because it's partial or it's the pressure of that part of whatever it is you're talking about. Okay, so in uh, the room that I'm in right now, we've got at, we've got nitrogen and oxygen and carbon dioxide plus a bunch of other gases. The total pressure that I'm experiencing in my office here is equal to the pressure that each of those gases would exert on me individually, all added up to plus each other. So the pressure of the nitrogen, the pressure of the oxygen, the pressure of the carbon dioxide, pressure of each individual of those other trace gases. All right. So here we go. We're just going to do a couple practice problems here, all right? Or one practice problem. I can't remember. We'll see. Uh, let's find out. All right, so it says a 15-liter cylinder contains 4.0 grams of hydrogen and 28 grams of nitrogen. If the temperature is 27 degrees, what is the total pressure of the mixture? We just learned from Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure that the total pressure is equal to the pressures of each individual thing. So that would be the pressure of the hydrogen, okay, plus the pressure of the nitrogen. And that's the only things that we have in our solution or in our a container, in this 15 liter cylinder. So we need to find the pressure of these two things. And in order to find these pressures, we're just going to use uh, PV equals NRT. All right, so uh, if we wanna find pressure, okay, so that means the pressure of our H2 would be equal to the moles of H2, okay, times the R value times temperature over the volume of the container and then the pressure of the nitrogen would be the same thing, but the moles of the nitrogen times R times T over volume, okay? So all we have to do is solve for the moles. Well, they give us grams here, so we're gonna have to convert these uh, grams to moles, and then we're essentially, and then we just plug them in and then we go. Let's see, I'm kinda out of space here, so let's do, we'll do the grams of the hydrogen right here. So 4.0 grams of H2, all right? So we put grams of H2 in the bottom, moles in the top. For every one mole, we have two point. So usually we round to the hundredths, but these numbers are way too easy. We're just going to, or way too tempting. We're just going to round to the tenth and call it good. So we'll do 2.0. So we have um, 2.0 moles of hydrogen. All right, so 2.0 moles of hydrogen. Now we also got to do the same thing with the nitrogen. Let's do that guy up here. So 28 grams of nitrogen. We're going to convert this to moles of nitrogen. So we're going to put uh, grams of nitrogen down at the bottom, moles in the top. For every one mole, we have uh, two nitrogens, so that'd be 28.02 technically based on what, how we do our math, but we're just going to stick with 28.0. All right, round to the tenth just to make life a little easier. So we have one mole of N2. All right, so now we just plug all these guys in. So uh, 
our moles of nitrogen, well that was 2.0, so we'll say 2.0, and the R value was, uh, well we'll just do it in atmospheres because all these answers are in atmospheres, so 0 0.0821, and the temperature is 27 degrees Celsius, so we'll add 273, so we'll have 300 Kelvin, okay, so times 300, all right, and we'll divide by the volume, which is 15 liters. All right, same thing down here. The moles of the nitrogen is equal to 1.0, right? And the R value is the same, 0 0.08 to 1. And then the temperature is 300. And then the volume is 15. All right, so we take those, we plug them into our calculator. So 2 times 0 0.08 to 1 times 300 divided by 15, we get 3. 284, okay, and we're not going to round early because that'll throw off our values. We don't want to round for six figs until later, all right? And the next answer should be exactly half of that, right? So I'm just going to hit that divided by two. So it'll be 1.642, right? So that's the moles of hydrogen and the mole, or the pressure of hydrogen and the pressure of the nitrogen, all right, atmospheres atmospheres. So that means the total pressure, okay, the total pressure is equal to uh, 3.284 plus 1.642, all right. So 4.926, and so our answer here had two sig figs, so our answer will have these two sig figs, all right. So 4.9 atmospheres. Cool? All right. Next thing here, okay, uh, we're going to do, they do just a little bit of math, and this looks confusing at first, but let's say we wanted to find the ratio of pressures of two different things, okay? So the ratio, this is essentially a ratio of pressures, P1 over PT, okay? And then they're just saying, well, P1 is equal to N1RT over V, and PT is equal to NTRT over V. And then every all of these guys cancel. The RTVs both cancel with each other because you're just dividing. You left with N1 over NT. Okay. So really, what this is saying is that the partial or the pressure value of or the part of the total pressure that our, our certain thing is is related to the number of moles compared to the total number of moles in our system. And they're just uh, just related equal to each other right there. So we get this new idea called the mole fraction. Okay, the mole fraction use this cool little symbol she like this, this little x guy, and this is equal to the moles of our compound divided by our total moles. All right, so that's all that means. So we talk about our, our moles of whatever it is we care about divided by the total moles, and we are good. All right, so that's the mole fraction. Okay, and so we can find the pressure of our compound if it, the the pressure of our specific thing from the total pressure just by multiplying the total pressure by the mole fraction okay so and this is essentially just this guy here just multiplied by pt on both sides so we can find the partial pressure of our thing by taking the the mole fraction okay times the total pressure okay so here we go couple practice problems all right a 4.0 liter vessel containing nitrogen at STP and a 2 liter vessel containing hydrogen at STP are connected by a valve if the valve is opened allowing the two gases to mix what is the mole fraction of the hydrogen in the mixture all right so a mole fraction of H2 would be equal to the moles of H2 divided by the total moles all right so uh, that's essentially what we're going to find. We got to find the moles of hydrogen, the moles of N2, or the total moles. Uh, yep. Okay. So uh, they give us a bunch of STP values, and so that should tell us that we're going to use the uh, ideal gas equation. So we have PV equals NRT. This time we're solving for N. Okay. So the moles of the H2 would be equal to. Uh, PV over RT. Now notice that none of it matters that it's H2 because this is our system conditions, not specific for that compound. All right, and then for the nitrogen, being the moles of nitrogen is also equal to PV over RT. All right, so the moles of hydrogen, well, it says uh, the hydrogen is at STP. 
Okay, and it's in a two liter vessel. So at STP, we're at 1.00 atmospheres. Okay, and our volume is a 2.0 liter vessel. Our R value is 0.0821, and our temperature is at STP, so that's 273 Kelvin. All right. And then for nitrogen, it's essentially the same thing. The only thing that's different for the nitrogen is the volume. All right, so 1.00 atmospheres. All right, and the volume for the nitrogen is a 4.0 liter container. R value is the same, 0.0821. That doesn't look like a parenthesis. There you go times are 273 Kelvin, 273 Kelvin. All right, so two divided by 0 0.0821 times 273, oh shoot, let me do that again. Fat finger in my calculator, 0 0.0821 times 273. All right, so I got 0 0.08923, 0 0.88, Nine, two, three, okay, moles of H2, all right, and then for the other guy, it's essentially the same thing, just times two, right, because it's four liters instead of two liters, so I got 0 0.178, uh, four, seven, moles, N2, Notice that I'm not really caring about my sig figs here. Number one, because this is a multiple choice question, all these answers have two sig figs, so that's a little bit of a test taking strategy. Number two, I don't really want to round these values early um, because they're not my final answer that I'm at yet. So at the end, you probably have to maybe look at back and figure out how many sig figs if you're answering like a short answer problem or something like that. All right, but anyway, so uh, mole fraction, here, so we have the moles of nitrogen, hydrogen, so that'd be the 0 0.08923 divided by the total moles, so that would be the 0 0.08923 plus the 0 0.17847. All right, so 0 0.08923 divided by 0 0.08923 plus, so I got. 0.3333, all right? And really are what we'd want two sig figs for our answer, so the answer would be B, all right? And that's it for this this little video, not too bad. Just a couple, just another tool in your tool bed is essentially all we're adding today. Anyway, do a lot, do your homework problems, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you on the flip side.